This morning's Gospel begins with the second time in the Gospel of Mark that Jesus predicts his passion. And it always strikes me as funny that the disciples freak out every time he predicts his passion. Because every time he says that the Son of Man will be killed, he also immediately says, after three days the Son of Man will rise again. But they hear that he's going to die and they just lose it. They freak out. They can't even fathom this, that he's still talking and saying something else after he said he's going to die. And their response to that is to be afraid and confused. And in their fear, they just remain silent. I guess you can't really blame them. The last time they said something about Jesus talking about his death, Jesus called Peter Satan. They probably weren't looking to be rebuked again, so they just stayed silent. Because they were afraid, because they didn't know. And they were afraid. How many times do we, in our own fear, just stay silent? Whether we're afraid of the repercussions of saying something, or we're afraid of just proving to other people that we don't have a clue as to what's going on. I don't know why that's a fear that we have. As if we should know every single thing that goes on in the world. And we should all be scholars of every single thing that exists. I like to consider myself a fairly intelligent person. I have a master's degree. I have a computer engineering degree. I know a lot of things about a wide variety of topics, but there's still a whole lot I don't know. Every now and again, my wife will come home from work and she'll say some fancy medical terms like hemochromatosis or medicine names that I can't even begin to tell you, but they probably end in I-N-E or some other weird word that just doesn't make any sense if you have no idea what it means. And a lot of the time I find myself just saying, okay, yeah, that sounds, that sounds like a word I've heard before. Of course I know what that medicine does. Who, who doesn't? Because for whatever reason, I'm afraid to show that I don't know this thing, that I have no reason to know. But we do it all the time. And I think that's what Jesus is getting at in the second part of this morning's gospel. We're afraid to let people know that we don't know things because it affects how they view us. And we don't want to be viewed as stupid or uninformed or unintelligent. We want to be that person that just knows what's going on, that is ready with the witty compact. That person just knows exactly what to say and has the right thing to say for the right situation all the time. We don't want to be left out. We don't want to be an outsider. We want to be in. So we pretend we're in, sometimes even going so far as to laugh at others who don't get the same thing we don't get. Oh, you don't know what hemochromatosis is? Ha <laughs> ha. That's so funny. Because I know, I'll let someone else explain it. Because <laughs> Sheena will explain it far better than I could. But I can't believe you don't know what this is. We do that so much because we're afraid to let people know that we just don't know something. And we're so ready to make ourselves part of the end group that we will ostracize people who are in the same boat as us. But Jesus is saying, that's not what it's about. If you want to be part of my kingdom, if you want to be the first in my kingdom, you must be a servant of everyone. If you want to be a leader in my kingdom, that's only going to happen if you serve the people of my kingdom. Then he takes his child. And we like to think that the child represents innocence, but I think it's much more than just innocence. That this child has no status. 
in society. This is just a child who probably can't think for itself. Just a little child that can't uh, have any reasonable expectation to having any rights or any autonomy. There is no st social status that can be gained by associating with this random child. But Jesus grabs this child and says, if you want to be part of my kingdom, you got to welcome people like this. you got to welcome people that have no possible way of increasing your status. Because status has nothing to do with the kingdom of God. In fact, if we are worried about status, we have missed out on God's kingdom. Because it's status that leads us to where we are today, where so many are ostracized. If we were to retell this story today, in today's society, instead of a child, we would bring a homeless person from the street and say, if you welcome one such, a, such as this, you welcome me, and not me, but the one who sent me. If we bring in someone who is just ridiculously poor, hasn't had a bath in weeks, and smells terrible, but we just welcome them in and say, you're a part of our community. That's when we're doing what God wants us to do. Anytime we see people like that, we say, oh, I can't believe they don't have as good of hygiene as I do. They can't come in. Oh, they don't have the right clothes. They can't come in. Oh, what's with that shaggy beard? That's not acceptable. They're not an appropriate church attire. They can't be part of our club. We've missed out. Because we have made the community of church, the body of Christ, about increasing our standing in the world. It's about making ourselves better. But that's not what God wants. God wants us to serve God's children. And some of God's children are gathered here this morning. But so many more are outside our doors. So many more will never set foot in this church. So many more we will walk right past and not even notice they are there. But that's not the kingdom of God. So today I am begging you to be attentive, to look for every single person that you may come across and find some way, small or large, that you can welcome them in to God's love. Because God's kingdom will never become a reality for us if we aren't willing to first participate in it. It sounds like a daunting task that it's on us to make the kingdom, of real, the kingdom of God a reality, but it is. That's why we're here. And if we're not trying to make God's kingdom a reality today, then what are we doing? If we're not trying to make that kingdom something that you can live in today, then we're just any other group of people who gather together so we can feel good about ourselves. I don't know about you, but I could use the kingdom of God in my life. I would love to see a world where you just go out on the street and everyone is nice to everyone else. And everyone just instinctively knows that they are loved so deeply that there is not a thing we could do to separate us from that love. That we go out and we seek to serve Christ in all persons. Because if we want to be leaders in the kingdom of God, we must be servants. We have Jesus as the greatest example of that. 
because in just a few moments, we are going to recreate the Last Supper. Well, something that happens after the Last Supper in John's Gospel is Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. It's Jesus looking at the people, some of whom were going to betray him. Some of whom, most of whom, would scatter when he was arrested. These people who have pledged to follow him and to give their life for him are nowhere to be found at the foot of the cross. And Jesus knows that this is what's going to happen. But Jesus doesn't say, oh, well, you're not fully committed, so you don't count. But Jesus gets down on his hands and knees and washes their feet to serve them. We should do likewise. We should find ways we can serve our community and our world. Because I want the kingdom of God to exist today. And I'm sure you do too. But we're only going to live in that kingdom if we do something to make it happen. So let's stop being a club. And let's be the body of Christ. And let's, meet, let's make the kingdom of God a reality. Amen. I'm not a doctor. Borborygmy. 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 Oh. I feel like it has something to do with the butt. It's an ADHD problem. Being born with an extra of something. It's like you got a bad butt. A name of one of your ribs? Okay, so it's pretty close. Cholidocolithiasis. Cholidocolithiasis? Cholidocolithiasis. 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 I'm guessing if you have cholidocolithiasis, it's not a good thing. Colon is acting up. You have two weeks left. Well, maybe it's like an advanced stage of cholera. It has something to do with the groin, pimples, and pus. And you from that area outwards. Oh, the common bile duct. Ankylosing spondylitis. Ankylosing span spondylitis. Ankylosing spondylitis. Ankylosing spondylitis. Tissue in your ankle isn't as spongy as it's supposed to be. It's when you spontaneously mess up your ankle. The medical term for kinkles. These words are tricky. They trick.